At the co-op school so far, we have had zero positive COVID cases, and we have been open now for 10 weeks, and things have been going well. We're an independent school um, in the heart of Bed-Stuy, a preschool through middle school. We have approximately 230 students. In the preschool, starting at two years old, we have an elementary division and a middle school through eighth grade. Deciding to reopen for all schools, whether independent, charter, or public, has been really complicated and difficult. As an independent school, we have some privileges to be able to make decisions, and obviously the lower enrollment, um, smaller class sizes, has made it possible to be on site. Our son is five, our daughter just turned three, and it seemed so critical to have them return to a space of socialization, being with friends, um, being with teachers who could guide them developmentally. Every morning, the families um, complete a app on their phone. They take their child's temperature, and um, it asks uh, you know, the normal COVID questions. Have you been exposed? Do you have any of these symptoms? And if they answer no to everything, um, they are cleared to come to school. Our nurse checks the dashboard every morning, um, and we're down there with thermometers if we need. The children come in, they sign in, they get hand sanitizer, and they come upstairs. When they get upstairs, they sit down and all of our grades change their shoes. So we wash our hands first thing in the morning. The students wear masks all day and they only take them off for nap time um, or snack or, um, and lunch time. We did go over how to best wash your hands. The teachers taught the students. Um, each of the classrooms has their um, daily cleaning logs for them to sort of keep track of when and, and what they are wiping down. Our policy is that um, any symptoms that are COVID symptoms, the child has to stay home and get a negative um, test. If they haven't had exposure, if no contact, um, we will accept the PCR test if it's negative. On both of our outside play spaces, we divided them into quadrants so that our classes, we can have three classes and a movement class up here all at the same time. They don't come into contact with each other. They have to stay in their quadrant. We're also really fortunate, Parks Department, they provide an opportunity for schools to apply for a permit to use the parks. Today, our class is going to be writing their own report cards. So we did apply for that, and we have a permit to use the Von King Park every day during the whole school day if we wanted. I'm just trying to keep up with um, the cleanliness, trying to make sure that uh, everything is clean and disinfected. Just trying to keep the kids and the staff as safe as possible. We have one full-time maintenance person, David, who is an army of one, and he keeps our school clean during the course of the day with extra cleaning of bathrooms and wiping down the railings in the halls. Every day, every week that the school has been open this fall has felt like a real gift, and a gift that's predicated on everyone's continued safety and adherence to this pretty strongly embraced and closely abided by social contract. I think we all expect that there, it will happen, that we will have to go remote. I think most, most educators think that, but I think that success is doing everything to the best of our ability. And I was actually in the park yesterday with our kindergarten class that does forest school twice a week. And the teacher and I, we were talking and she said to me, that she feels as young as the kindergartners are, they realize how lucky they are to be back in school and there seems to be with the children this happiness of being back and they don't take it for granted. And it's really interesting, but we have felt that this year. They're making age group friends. They are really connecting with their teachers. They're coming home with these incredible new skills. I feel like that's success. I think that there's a really difficult balance right now and a false balance, but one where we need to find a better way to come around in discussion where we're not pitting the interests of teachers, families, and children against one another. And I really credit the co-op school with finding a way to knit these interests together in a way that keeps everybody safe and healthy and emotionally sound during this incredibly trying period.